congratulations on purchasing a safety hoist EH500 electric material hoist. We're confident your new EH500 will make any job simpler, safer, and more efficient than ever before. In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up your EH500 and how to get it prepared for your first run. First things first, when you receive your EH500 shipment, you should receive a skid and two boxes. You should inspect your shipment for missing boxes or damage to any of the boxes. If you notice anything is wrong with your shipment, sign for it as damaged or incomplete and do not open the boxes. You should immediately call our customer service team who will file a claim for you. The number is 610-941-4333. After inspecting your shipment and verifying you have all the expected boxes, begin unpacking your shipment. Once all boxes have been unpacked, you should have Box 1, containing 1 power pack, with the additional following items continued in the storage compartment. 1 power cord with screw connection, pendant with screw connection, instruction manual, assembly hardware bag, lifting handle. Box 2, containing deck with pre-mounted flap, Carriage trolley, two carriage support arms, two plywood carrier brackets, EH peak, box three containing four foot track section with splice plates attached. 8 foot base track section with feet attached. Box 4 containing 2 8 foot track sections with splice plates attached. Once all pieces have been identified and inspected, you're now ready to start assembling your hoist. Gather the 4 pieces of track and lay them on the ground. The 8 foot base with the feet attached should be at the bottom, with the 2 additional 8 foot track sections above it, and the 4 foot section at the top. You will know the track is facing the correct way if the off-centered rungs are closer to the ground. Please note, the track will not fit together if any sections are upside down. When your track arrives, the splice plates will be attached to the outside of the track sections. You must uninstall the splice plates and reinstall them on the insides of the track sections before completing your next step. Once your splice plates have been installed, you may now begin assembling your track. The track sections are to be attached using pre-installed splice plates. The pre-existing square holes on the splice plates should line up with the holes on the track. Start with the base section, which has the pre-installed feet. Line up the two attached splice plates with the next track section. Push the two sections of track together and fasten using 3 8 16 by 3 quarter carriage bolts. Secure the track section by hand tightening the nylon wing nuts. Repeat the step going from bottom to top until all track sections are secured. It is now time to assemble the carriage. To begin, attach the deck with pre-mounted flap to the trolley using the pre-existing holes, utilizing 3 8 16 by one and a quarter bolts and 3 8 16 nylon nuts. Utilizing the same hardware, attach the two carriage support arms by lining them up to their corresponding sides and securing them in place. Tighten all bolt locations using two 9 16th wrenches. You may now slide the completed carriage onto the top track section by engaging the wheels onto the track. You will know this is done properly when the carriage glides smoothly up and down the track. Leave the carriage near the base of the track section. 
It is now time to attach the peak. Slide the peak assembly onto the top of your track and check to make sure the square holes are aligned. Secure each of the four holes using 3 8 16 by 3 quarter carriage bolts and 3 8 16 caps nut. Tighten using a 9 16th wrench. You may now move on to assembling the power unit. Remove the power cord and pendant cord from the power unit storage compartment and attach them to the power pack via the quick connect fittings. There are both male and female adapters. The connectors can be tightened with the metal rings near the base. Ensure that the connectors are snug. Then clip both cables to the top eyelets. These eyelets ensure that the cable cannot be pulled out of position during operation. You should now install the lifting handle of the power pack using the 3 8 dash 16 by 1 inch alloy button head screw and 3 8 dash 16 nylon nuts, secure the lifting handle to the power pack. Ensure that the heads of the bolts are towards the inside. Repeat until all bolts are secure. Tighten with a 9 16th wrench and a 732 inch allen key. Turn the track assembly on its side and move the power pack within 6 feet of where you will be setting the hoist up. Plug the power unit into any working power source that is capable of supplying 110 volts and 15 amps. Any household outlet or portable generator is typically capable of this. Using the down button on the pendant controller, unwind enough cable to go up the track, through the peak pulley, and down the other side. Make sure you are keeping enough positive tension on the cable while unwinding. This means you should be pulling the cable from the drum with a gloved hand, keeping the cable taut to prevent cable crossover. Take the remove cable and walk it up the back and to the peak pulley. Thread the cable through the pulley and down the front of the track. Ensure that the cable is threaded between the carriage and the rungs. Remove the clevis pin on the carriage. Run the cable through the newly opened hole located between the attachment block. Secure the cable by threading the pre-existing cotter pin through it. The washer must stay on. Repin in place using the supplied clevis pin and pull to ensure the cable is snug and will not disconnect. You may now stand your hoist. Using two people, raise the hoist and move it to the building where it will be used, ensuring it is stabilized. For added stabilization and roof edge protection, use the hoist standoff. You may now attach the power pack to the third and fourth rung from the bottom. There are distinct black rings called stop collars that will keep the power pack from shifting. Secure it with the attached anchor pin. Using the pendant controller, press the up button to remove any excess cable slack. Release the button as soon as there is no cable slack remaining. You are now ready to do a trial run. 
Press the up button on the pendant controller to lift the carriage up and press the down button to lower the carriage. As soon as the carriage hits the top or the bottom, be sure to remove your finger from the button to avoid cable crossover. If cable crossover does occur, correct it immediately. If cable crossover is not corrected when it happens, you risk cable damage or failure on future runs. You may now begin to use your hoist. Lower the carriage to the desired position and begin loading your supplies. Make sure you are inspecting your winch drum and inspecting your cable during each run. Crossovers must be corrected. Want to make your EH500 more efficient? Visit www.safetyhoistcompany.com to check out our growing accessories line, making it possible to lift buckets, bricks, solar panels, and everything in between. Whatever you are lifting, we have an accessory for you.